Hello and welcome to another tutorial. In this one we're going to be covering the blood supply to the breast and it's also a good opportunity to cover all branches of the subclavian artery and the axillary artery so we'll do that as we go along but we'll be paying attention to uh, the arteries one to five here that all supply the breast. You'll also notice that I'm able actually to uh, type out text on the tutorials now which is probably a great relief to you if you've been trying to read my scruffy handwriting so thankfully the upgrade came along. So let's start off by saying, well, these arteries, one to four, they all supply the breast and they come from the axillary artery. And the one remaining one down here, the internal thoracic, that comes from the subclavian. So we are going to look at the branches of the subclavian then the axillary and we're going to be looking out for these named five vessels that all supply the breast. Moving on first then to the subclavian artery it has three segments so we're going to draw that on coming in here so that's the artery we now need to draw on a triangular kind of shaped muscle and we're going to put some uh, muscle fibers in there to my crude drawing just so you don't forget that is a muscle and that muscle is the anterior scalene. And then we'll get the vessel, which is the subclavian coming round. We also need to draw on the first rib, which is gonna come round a bit like this. Costal cartilage coming back there. And of course, the anterior scalene is actually gonna to attach to that first rib there. So this is our subclavian artery. We're do, dealing with the left side, so we need to remember that down here, the origin of the subclavian artery would come directly from the aorta. If this was the right side, then of course it would come from the brachiocephalic trunk. The subclavian artery is broken down into three segments. A segment from the aorta to the first medial border of the scalene muscle. So that's segment number one in there. The second segment passes posterior to the scalene muscle itself, the anterior scalene. So I'm just going to draw that in dotted lines going posteriorly to the muscle. That's the second segment. So that's number two in there. And the third segment is the part of the subclavian artery that appears from behind the anterior scalene muscle and continues on to the lateral border of the first rib. So as it crosses the first rib there and the vessel goes anterior over the top of the first rib, once it goes past the lateral border of rib one, it becomes anything thereafter is the axillary artery. So that has defined the extent of our subclavian artery. So all of the branches that we're going to talk about pretty much come off the first segment. Uh, so we can talk about those now. We can draw them on as we uh, deal with them. The first one comes off in here and that's going to be the vertebral artery, which I think you've heard of before. So that's number one and that's the vertebral artery. So I'm going to put a vert in there, obviously not supplying the breast. The second one is going to be a short stubby one and that is one which you may have heard of before. That's called the, and I'm going to abbreviate here, that's called the thyro cervical trunk. And the reason why that's important really is because in head and neck, we learn that one of its branches is called the inferior thyroid artery. It's important for supplying the thyroid gland and that's why we look for it in head and neck. The third one we are interested in today, that is coming down here, and that is the internal thoracic artery. So that's three, so that's important. That's the internal thoracic artery. And the internal thoracic artery will give off anterior in intercostals with perforating branches that will supply the breast and mainly they come from the second to the fourth region so intercostals into C's so second to the fourth intercostals coming from the internal thoracic artery are supplying the breast there's one last one here that we must mention 
which is coming up here and it's not of too much importance but we're just going to mention it for completeness so number four up here let me do that properly number four is called the Costo cervical trunk so I'm going to put CCT in there that's not important I will say one thing about it though and that its origin on the left and right is different so just for completion I'll say on the left it comes just medial to the scalene in the first segment but on the right it comes from the second segment so it comes from behind the scalene muscle uh, and be mindful of that in when you're looking at the anatomy so that's our subclavian artery we can now move on and talk about our axillary artery so from the subclavian artery all we've seen so far is this fella down here the internal thoracic artery the only branch supplying breast we're now going to move on to look at the axillary remember the axillary began its origin here as the as the vessel the subclavian past the lateral border of the first rib so we are now going to draw that on so here we can draw the vessel coming down like this i'm also going to draw on the coracoid process. I'm just going to draw that up here because we need to draw another muscle coming from there and that is going to be the fibres coming down and again rather crude rubbish drawing but hopefully you'll get the picture. So this is the coracoid process, coracoid process there and this muscle coming down rather badly drawn which I apologize for is going to be the pectoralis minor muscle and you can notice that the oops get rid of that right color that our axillary artery is going to go posterior there and then come out behind so actually it's got a similar kind of anatomical uh, feel about it, it, it as, as the subclavian artery it's got three segments it's got a segment that stretches from its origin at the lateral border of the first rib which is back here where it becomes the axillary artery so that's the first segment that's number one we have the second segment that goes posterior to fibers of the pectoralis minor muscle that's number two and a third segment which comes out from the lateral border of pectoralis minor and then descends down uh, eventually going into the arm and becoming the brachial artery so that's three so that's three segments just like we had with the subclavian artery the rule here is that we have six branches in total so six branches from those three segments and the rule here to help you remember is that we have one branch from the first segment, so that's one from one, two branches from the second segment, that's two from two, and three branches from the third segment, that's three from three. And not all of those six branches, of course, supply the breast, but we'll point those out as we come across them. So let's just try and rub some bits out here. Just no, That wasn't very good. Just draw a bit of our pectoralis. Uh, minor back in there and we'll get rid of this bit down here so here we have our axillary artery so let's start to draw on some of those branches so our first and only branch coming from the first segment is going to be coming down here and that is called the superior thoracic artery so superior thoracic s T for superior thoracic it's a small branch coming from the anterior surface of the axillary artery so that's our only branch to come from the first segment coming from the second segment originating and just poking out on the medial side from underneath the pectoralis minor is going to be a small stubby little branch here that gives off a number of different branches the one we're interested in actually comes down here and it's the pectoral branch of what's known as the thoracoacromial artery. So 
the artery, so the second one here is called the thoracoacromial, so TA, but the branch we're interested in in here is actually the pectoral branch, it's the only the pectoral branch from the thoracoacromial artery which supplies the breast. So the thoracoacromial is short and stubby and it comes from the anterior surface of the second segment. The third branch, but of course the uh, second, the two from two up here, the second one to come from the second segment is going to be a branch that comes from under the pectoralis minor and poking out on the lateral surface here, coming down is going to be the lateral thoracic. So this one in here is the lateral thoracic, so LT for lateral thoracic. This does supply breast from uh, a superior position. So all of them that we've mentioned so far, the superior thoracic, the pectoral branch from the thoracoacromial and the lateral thoracic are all responsible for supplying breast tissue. We're now going to move on to the three branches from the third segment. So the third segment is anything thereafter, the lateral border of pectoralis minor going down uh, thereafter. We've got three branches here, only one of them is um, responsible for giving branches to the breast and that's the largest of the branches, we'll draw that on first. This one coming down here is our fourth branch and this is called the subscapular artery. So subscapular, so SS subscapular. That is the largest branch of the axillary artery and supplies breast. There's two others here, really just for completion, we're gonna draw them on and they sort of come off in, uh, what I'm doing that color. Let's undo that, let's do it in red. They're gonna come off here and here and they are known as the anterior and posterior circumflex arteries. They go around, supply the bone of the humerus. Uh, so they make up the three from three, the two, the anterior circumflex artery, the posterior circumflex artery, plus the one we're interested in, the subscapular artery, is supplying the breast. So there we go. We've got all of our branches from both the subclavian and the axillary, and as we've gone along, we've pointed out those that supply breast. See you again soon.